Hey guys, welcome to section 4.6. In this section, we'll learn how to factor polynomials using the greatest common factor, also known as the GCF. Let's get started. So to factor out the GCF, the first thing we need to do is obviously identify what the GCF is. So the easiest way to kind of explain this is something that you've done since middle school or elementary school, perhaps is to start off with an example. So the greatest common factor of 15, 24, and 27 is three, because three is the largest number that divides all three numbers, 15, 24, and 27. So is there a larger number that divides, say, you know, 24 and 27? In this case, no, it's actually just three. But had these numbers been 15, 24, and 30, well, six would have divided both 24 and 30 15 would divide both 15 and 30, but one number would not divide all three. So for instance, six divides the 24 in the middle, but it does not divide 15 or 24. So therefore six cannot be the GCF. The C stands for common. It has to be common to all three terms. It cannot just work for two of the three or three of the five. Whenever we say that we have a GCF, it has to be what's common to every single term in the problem. Now with variables, all terms must have the variable that you're trying to factor out. So we factor out the lowest power or the lowest exponent of that variable. And lastly, the, the thing that probably most students make a mistake on is the moment you write down the GCF, you have to open parentheses. And I'll explain when we get to it. So let's say we have a problem that says factor 4x squared minus 20x plus 16. So again, we have a factoring question. The first thing we think of is the GCF, if there is one. So let's think about just the numbers first. So always think of the numbers first and then think about the variables. So here, if we think of 4, negative 20, and 16, well, we can come to the conclusion that the GCF is 4 fairly quickly because four divides four, four divides negative 20, and four divides 16. So we can factor a four out, leaving behind x squared minus five x plus four. And just to check, this is something that you can always do. If you factor something out, if you were to distribute it back in, you would go back to basically where you started, which was four x squared minus 20 x plus 20. So if we were to distribute the four back into this, we would get four x squared, four times negative five x is negative 20 x, and then four times four is 16. So if we distribute, we go back to where we were. So distribution and factoring are essentially just opposite operations of each other. You undo one by doing the other. Now, for the same problem, what happens if we had factored out a two instead of a four? Well, it's still a common factor because four, negative 20, and 16 are still all divisible by two. So it's a common factor. And if we do that, we're left behind with two x squared minus, two, minus 10 x, sorry, plus eight. However, all the remaining terms still have a two in common, which leads us to think or recognize that two is not the greatest common factor. That's essentially what we were looking for. Not just a common factor, but the greatest common factor. And let's look at a new problem. So here we have a question that says factor 30 x to the fourth y squared minus 15 x cubed y to the seventh 10 or plus 10 x squared y to the sixth minus 60 x to the fifth y to the third. So again, a summary from what we've done in the previous problem, you always try to deal with the numbers first, and then second, you try to deal with the variables. So if we just look at the numbers, 30, negative 15, 10, and negative 60, we notice that they either all end with zeros or end with fives. So they obviously all have to be multiples of five or divisible by five. So we can start our search there. Let's say, you know, we think that the GCF is five, so five goes into 36 times, five goes into negative 15, negative three times, 10 goes, oh, sorry, five goes into 10 twice, five goes into negative 60, negative 12 times. 
Now, if we try to think of a larger number, something bigger than five that goes into all four numbers, we can't really find it. So if we think of 10, well, 10 goes into 30, into 10, and negative 60, but it doesn't work for negative 15. Well, let's say we go further. Let's say we go to 15. Well, 15 goes into 30, 15 goes into negative 15, 15 goes into negative 60, but 15 does not go into 10. So here, oftentimes, especially when you're trying to get a feeling for, no, five is the GCF, sometimes it's best to just write down the terms that remain and then see if there was something else in common. Meaning, if you look at the previous problem, here, if we thought that the GCF was two and we factored it out, we're left behind with a two, a negative eight, uh, sorry, a negative 10 and an eight. Here, it's pretty obvious, or you'll start to get a feel for, hey, I could have factored more out. So then you factor out another two, or you just say, oh, I, I should have just factored out a four from the very beginning. The idea is the same here. If you factor the five out, you'll start to recognize that, hey, that actually is my GCF. So we've dealt with the numbers, and now let's think about what variables we need to factor out. So do we have an X in the first term, in the second term, in the third, and in the fourth? Yes. So every single term has an X in it. Now what about the Y's? Here's a Y, another Y, another Y, and another Y. So every single term has a Y in it as well. Meaning we can factor it out at the very least an X and a Y. The next question we look for, or the next thing we look for is the lowest power of these variables or the lowest exponent. So here I have a four, a three, a two, and a five. So the lowest power of X is two. And if we look at the Y's, I have a two, a seven, a six, and a three. The lowest power again is two. So what we're basically doing when we look for the lowest power is saying the following. This term has four X's that it can share. This term has three X's that it can share. This one only has two and this one has five. Now, if we say that contribution is mandatory from every single term, it wouldn't be fair to ask for this term to give up four when this term can only give up two. By the same token, it wouldn't make sense for this term to give up three y's when this term can only give up two. So that's why we always look at the least number or the least exponent that can be factored out of every single term. So we are being fair across the board. We're not treating one term differently from another. So again, we write down our GCF five x squared y squared. And the moment you write this down, we open parentheses. This is what I wrote in green in the previous page because it's exceptionally important. The moment you factor out a GCF, you open parentheses. And then to figure out what goes on the inside, you divide each one of the original terms that you had in the problem by your GCF. And we can do this slowly term by term. So 30 divided by five is six. So I put a six here. X to the fourth divided by X squared is just X squared. Y squared divided by Y squared is one. So we don't have any Y's left over. Now we move on to the next term. Negative 15 divided by five is negative three. X cubed divided by X squared is just a single X. Y to the seventh divided by Y squared is Y to the fifth. And then I hope that you guys can manage filling in the terms for the other two as well. So we're left with this as our answer. 3p squared q to the fifth minus 7xy to the fourth plus 15x squared y to the third minus 10pq to the tenth. Again, deal with the numbers first and the variables second. Now, in this question, what I wanted to get across was the idea that you can always factor out a one or a negative one if you're at a loss for terms, or if you're if you say that hey, these numbers don't really have anything in common you could factor just the one out, which is to say divide everything by one, which is in turn to say change nothing. Because when you divide something by one, nothing changes, the number stays the same. So if we look at this problem, three, negative seven, 15, and negative 10, well, there's not really anything besides one that I can factor out or negative one for that matter. So all we can do here is just factor out a one, 
and then we're left with the same exact thing on the inside. Because what happens if you divide each one of these terms by one individually? They'll stay the same, nothing changes. Now, alternatively, what we're also allowed to do is factor out a negative one. So if we factor out a negative one here, what happens to all the signs on the inside of the terms or on the inside of the parentheses? All of them have to flip because distribution has to take us back to the original question. So if we have a three P squared Q to the fifth, that's positive. If I were to factor a negative out, that term would become negative. If I had a negative term to begin with, like the second one, seven X Y to the fourth, when I factor the negative out, it'll turn positive. And that's it. So with these questions, it's not so much to say that you can factor them. But I wanted to introduce this trick here because this is something we will use quite frequently in the future. And I believe that's the end of this. Yes. So as usual, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.